Okay, so I was just in bed and I got an email from Australian Media and they want to talk to me about the video I put up about the dairy industry. I just wanted to chat to you about the video you posted um, on the 11th, um, just about the um, the dairy farmers and the farmers that are quitting the industry and stopping work. Yep. Um, so I know you sort of you say a lot in the video, I just thought I'd um, give you a call to be able to chat as well. So um, I know you sort, of, you sort of brought it up, um, but is it sort of your, your feeling that um, dairy farmers who are unable to or find it to work in the industry anymore should sort of just get over it and, and find a new job? Is that sort of how, how you look at it? <laughs> well, not that simply. But I think it would be right. why, I, I don't think they should just get over it and get a new job. I mean, I didn't say it that bluntly in the video. I think I gave yeah. a little bit more context than that. But um, I do think that there are more, um, there are victims who are suffering more than the dairy farmers and those are the cows and the calves who are separated and uh, sent to slaughterhouses and killed. And the environment as well, the uh, resources we're using for dairy milk a thousand litres of water per litre of milk. The environment's taken a hit and the land use and the grain and all of that. Uh, it's just a bad use of our resources. And I think it would be wise for dairy farmers to move into more ethical, sust sustainable alternatives. The animals in the planet, yeah, and and like dairy is yeah. cruel and outdated. I mean, it's, we're moving into uh, more ethical, sustainable alternatives, and farmers should move along with that as well. But the thing is, it doesn't matter if they want to or they don't. Demand will set will will tell the farmers what to farm. So when when, when demand changes, uh, the farmers change what they farm. That's what happens. It's supply and demand. Right. Yeah. So you sort of think it's a not only is it sort of a um, a moral or ethical thing. It's also basically just an economic well it's the, the moral and environmental factors are driving the demand people are waking up on mass to that and they're just saying we don't want dairy anymore we're, we're not baby cows we don't want the cruel abusive uh product that's destroying the environment we want plant milk right yeah um and so i know in the in the video that you shared on the 11 um, dairy farm with a woman so she, she's getting quite emotional yeah and quite sad about having having to stop do you, do you sympathize with with her at all or for dairy farmers in general at all? Yeah, I do sympathise with that individual because she's been brought up in a farming community. Her father farms, a dairy farmer. Um, she, yeah. it, she's, it's culturally conditioned into her. So yeah, like, but I also look at it from the animal's perspective as well. And she called herself a cow person. Oh, we're cow people. We do it because we love the cows. I mean, all those cows are slaughtered. They're all shot in the head and slashed across the throat. If she was a cow person, why wouldn't she have a sanctuary? You know, instead of exploiting and killing those animals. I mean, uh, I understand that there's a certain conditioning that she's undergone from birth, probably like being taught that dairy farming is completely okay, normal and necessary. But from the animal's perspective, it's not. It's just, it's horrific, whichever way you look at it. I know that um, in some stories you've sort of been referred to as a militant vegan. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that's sort of a, a term that you you would disagree with, or how do you feel about that sort of betrayal of, of your movement and sort of what you're saying? Well, it depends what someone means by militant. I think the word militant means to bear arms, to force your political agenda or something like that not at all we're just trying to create positive change we're trying to liberate animals from their suffering from slaughterhouses we're trying to help the earth um if that makes me a militant vegan um then what are the rest of society that pay for uh animals to be put in but uh butchered in slaughterhouses i mean i think that's more extreme and militant like what we do to animals we're trying to stop that right so you sort of you disagree with that with that characterization well, it just it just it shows where society's at. I mean, I'm speaking up for animals, and most of society are animal lovers, but they select which species of animals they care about. We care about all species of animals. We care about the cows, the pigs, the chickens, the fish. You know, we don't want to see them get stabbed and hung up by their hoof in a slaughterhouse and hacked into pieces just as much as you don't want to see your dog get stabbed in the throat and chopped up and served as steak. So we're just consistent about the animals that we care about. And if that makes me an extremist, then what does that say about the rest of the public? Right. Um, and 
So I feel like just touching back on, a, on another point, do you think it's sort of um, a bit disingenuous for dairy farmers to to sort of get upset or to, to claim they, they love the animals that they're working with, given what happens to them? I, I can't read the dairy farmer's mind. I don't know whether they genuinely do love the animals and they just have a really weird, bizarre um, idea about what love is. Because if you truly love someone, you don't send them to the slaughterhouse to turn them into burgers. Um, you don't exploit right. them, separate them from their children. You don't stick your fist inside of their anus and, you know, stick semen inside of their vagina at the age of one year old right. so you can use them for their um, reproductive organs and make money off of them. You don't do that to people you love or to animals you love. Um, so, yeah, they, they probably might have a warped sense of what love actually is, but I'm not a mind reader. Um yeah. And I do think that she was genuinely upset, but maybe just more because, like, it's a tradition. She's let going of, of, of a tradition. But, like, a lot of traditions are cruel and outdated. I mean, we shouldn't do something or continue to do it because it's traditional. I mean, it doesn't make it moral or ethical or good for the environment or good for anyone. Right. Um, and in terms of the video, um, have you had much feedback um, after the video, I know she's had like quite a few shares and quite a few reactions and stuff. What's been the overwhelming um, feeling of the feedback you've gotten from the video? Oh, well, there's about a thousand comments. I think they're mostly uh, positive yeah. comments. Uh, you know, right. I mean, I wasn't there to make a hate video towards dairy farmers. I look. We just want animals to be liberated. We want farmers to have a job doing something else. Um, hopefully something that doesn't exploit animals and is better for the environment. And that's what we want to see. We want to see a better world. And we want to see those farmers, those dairy farmers, part of that better world. I don't want to see them struggling and crying and depressed. But I also don't want to see animals strung up by their hoof and stabbed in the neck. So we can come to some sort of middle ground where they liberate animals, leave them alone, and, and you know, farm plant foods. And if, if their land can't farm plant foods, then they have to find some alternative work. Uh, but it shouldn't be at the expense of someone else's life. Right. Um, and sort of speaking more, more generally, I guess, about about you and, and, um, and what you do. I know you um, obviously made quite a few television appearances and, you know, you're quite outspoken about, about your views. Yeah. Um, what, sort of, what sort of reaction do you get from people to that, um, you know, sort of touching on the way that um, you've been portrayed as a militant vegan and, and that sort of thing? What, what do people say to you or what sort of feedback do you get um, from people? Well, it depends. Uh, it depends on, you know, what, what end of the spectrum they're on. A lot of people are grateful that they're woken up to something they weren't aware of before like wow they didn't actually realize what dairy products entailed for animals and for the environment they didn't actually realize what uh their steak was actually a you know a living sentient animal with emotions who wanted to live i mean a lot of people are disconnected from that and then you get people who are, are fighting i mean you got the what are the three stages of truth first they ignore you uh then they laugh at you then they fight you then you win <laughs> So, right, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people at the fighting stage, some people at the laughing stage, some people just don't care. Apathy, that's probably the ignoring stage. Um, but we're, right. we're getting to the winning stage, and it's starting to come into the mainstream, and we have to do something because the planet's going to absolute... <laughs> like, for lack of a better right. word, like the Amazon's right. being destroyed. And people are waking up like, look, you're always going to get your people who are like, you know, not willing to change. But there's always going to be a group of, a huge, large group of people who are willing to change and are willing to make changes in their life and for the betterment of the earth and for the animals. Right, absolutely. Cool. Cheers, Joe. I'll let you, um, I'll let you get some rest, mate. Thanks, Heath, for having a chat. Again, appreciate it. It's late. And, um, yeah, thanks, Heath, for helping me out. Anytime at all, mate. No problems. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, we'll see how that one went. Hopefully that one went okay. Woke me up out of bed to have a discussion about the ethics of dairy. So, anyways, we'll read the article. Maybe I'll post the article somewhere up here and we can read through it um, in the morning maybe together. We'll have a sus. Anyways, peace.
we've had to make the decision that it's it for us. They rely on their practices being kept secret. They like to perpetuate this humane dairy fairy tale and that's all coming to the light now.